All right, hello. So let's start off with some basic class information. So Centurion is a magical class. He is a bravery skill tier focus class. He stacks a skill carpet bombing, which is this one over here. For ERP, you want to invest 100 points in active tenacity, strength, and bravery skill damage. Then you want to invest 100 points in skill cooldown reduction. Then you want to invest 50 points in polarize, then 50 points in damage increase to boss monsters, and then finally 100 points in adaptation. If you register Centurion into the L Surge Party Collection, you will get damage dealt by boss monsters decrease, 2% for first job, 3% for third job, and 5% for master class. Next up, I want to talk about Chung's character system. Overall, for Ascent in PvE, Chung's character system is largely irrelevant. The main thing you need to be aware of is that under Chung's MP bar, he has cannonballs. Some of his skills and commands use cannonballs, but when he is in 3 beat awakening, he has unlimited cannonballs. For more information on Chung's character system, please refer to the LWiki link, linked in the description. Alright, next up I want to talk about passives that I think are important to know for PvE. The first passive I want to talk about is Mobile Shelling. So all Chungs have a skill called Siege Shelling. When you use Siege Shelling, you will be in Siege Stance. When you are in Siege Stance, you can press X to fire a cannonball. So this passive allows Chung to change from Siege Stance to Mobile Siege Stance by pressing the down key. In Mobile Siege Stance, pressing X will fire an Enhanced Cannonball. Centurion mainly gets Enhanced Cannonballs from the skill Cannon Strike. Centurion has a unique system that automatically uses Enhanced Cannonballs to increase the damage of certain skills. To exit from Mobile Siege Shelling Stance, press down again to enter Siege Stance and then either left or right. You will automatically revert to Siege Stance if you use up all your Enhanced Cannonballs when you're in Mobile Siege Shelling. The next passive I want to talk about is Reaction Gloves. This passive reduces damage taken and increases magic attack power while awakened depending on the amount of awakening beads consumed. So basically, it's very important to be in 3 bead awakening for Centurion. The next passive I want to talk about is Commander Tactics. So basically, your MP gain is increased by 60% and awakening charge is increased by 400% when you're attacking an enemy with a commander's mark debuff. This passive will also increase the range of cannon strike, and enemies hit by cannon strike will receive commander's mark debuff. So this passive makes it so you don't really need to bring the skill commander's mark to inflict the commander's mark debuff. The MP gain and awakening charge increase can be really helpful and refund you a lot if you're getting a lot of hits in from skills like carpet bombing, etc. The next passive I want to talk about is Kinetic Bombardment. This passive is a lot more important in PvP, but for PvE, the main reason why I want to bring up this passive is that if you're ever in Siege Stance and you press up, you'll enter Kinetic Bombardment. And to get out of this stance, you just press up again and either press left or right. You will also exit this stance if you use up all the red cannonballs and you'll go right back into Siege Stance and then you can just exit with left or right. And finally, the last passive I want to talk about is Pulse Reload. And the main thing you want to be aware of for this passive is that your stats will increase depending on the number of cannonballs you hold. And as mentioned earlier in this video, if you are in 3 beat Awakening, you will have unlimited cannonballs so you should always be getting the max benefits from this passive. And next up, I want to talk about relevant commands for this class. If you look at Centurion's combos, the ones with a cannon indicator mean that he will go into Siege Stance after the command is performed. XX is the fastest way to go into Siege Shelling mode. If you need to deal great damage, going into Siege Shelling, then pressing down to go into Mobile Siege Shelling is your best bet. So if you ever need to deal great damage, press XX for a Siege Stance, and then press down for Mobile Siege Stance. Alright, and next up I want to talk about skills that I think are relevant for PvE. The first skill I want to talk about is El Saldama. The recommended skill trait is Empowered. This is a skill you can precast. This skill is good for clearing, big bosses, refunds you a decent amount of mana, and it curves. The next skill I want to talk about is Aiming Shot. The recommended skill trait is critical. The only reason why I'm mentioning this skill is because 
If you use this skill when you're falling in 12-8, it will teleport you to the bottom. The next skill I want to talk about is Dread Chase. As for the recommended skill trait, you want to take critical if you're at birth and then take heavy otherwise. This skill will shoot consecutive homing missiles. This skill is good for cleaning up mobs and it can be a filler skill for bossing. The next skill I want to talk about is impact detonation. The recommended skill trait is heavy. If you're using the skill in PvP, you'd want to take the light trait. The modded version of the skill will shoot a portal that deals continuous damage forward. This can be a filler skill for bossing and cleaning up mobs when clearing due to its quick cast time and relatively low cost. You generally want to bring the modded version of this skill. The next skill I want to talk about is Magnum Shot, and the recommended skill trait is Evil. This is a cheap, fast cast active that can be brought for active random missions. It does good damage when used point blank. If you're geared enough, it will kill Grey Cages and Rosal Raid, etc. faster than if you used Siege Shelling or Mobile Siege Shelling. The next skill I want to talk about is Chaos Cannon. Chaos Cannon. The recommended skill trait is Heavy. You will reload one cannonball and enter Heavy Stance. While in Heavy Stance, Centurion will gain 20% damage reduction and gain immunity to stun and flattening. You will fire 8 shots, up to 10, from both sides of the cannon. You can press X to speed up the process. This can be a filler skill for bossing. The next skill I want to talk about is Carpet Bombing. As for the skill trait, you want to take critical for birth raid and then heavy if you're not at birth raid yet. Even if you aren't at birth yet, if you don't have a lot of cooldown reduction, you might want to take critical because it is a very important clearing skill. The unmodded version has better vertical range and doesn't curve. You want to bring it for dungeons like 13.1 or 13.3. For the modded version, it has better horizontal range and curves. You want to bring it for dungeons like 13.4. Generally, you want to bring the unmodded version for birth raid, but for 15.6 phase 2, you can bring the modded version. The modded version of the skill looks like this. The next skill I want to talk about is Tactical Field. As for the skill trait, you can either take Killing Blow 1 or Gigantic, it doesn't matter, it's up to your preference. You will create a Tactical Field. While allies are in the field, ally received damage is decreased by 20%, allies physical and magical attack is increased by 10%, allies will recover 6 MP every 1.6 seconds, and allies will gain super armor. The field lasts for 20 seconds. For the modded version, you will create a tactical field for 5 seconds, and you can hold the skill key for the field to last up to 10 seconds. While allies are in the field, damage dealt to mid-boss and boss monsters is increased by 40%. Also received damage is decreased by 40%, and allies will recover 6 MP every 2 seconds, and allies will gain super armor. Modded tactical field gives better buffs, but you cannot move when you are using it. Generally, if you are DPSing, bring unmodded. If you are solely playing a support, bring modded. So for the unmodded version, you can throw the field down and then move somewhere else. And then for the modded version, you can't move. The next skill I want to talk about is Artillery Strike Missile Shower. The recommended skill trait is critical. Hold the skill key and use the arrow keys to set your target, then release the key to bomb the area. Try not to hold if you're doing DPS. You can pre-cast this skill. The missiles drop randomly, so the damage is RNG. The skill is a very strong bossing skill. While you're holding the skill, you're in iframes. This skill is a really good skill to hold if you need iframes, if you're just playing support in Roserade or something like that. The next skill I want to talk about is Mortar. As for the skill trait, you generally want to take the heavy trait because this skill is very expensive to maintain. If you have more cooldown issues, you can go critical instead. 
So you will deploy a mortar which bombs enemies in an area. You can set up a max of three of these. Mortars are invincible in dungeons. The skill does more damage on tall bosses. Be careful with placing, the skill does splash damage, so may mess up grouping for 13-3 bosses, etc. The next skill I want to talk about is Cannon Strike. The recommended skill trait is Light. You will reload all cannonballs and enhance cannonballs. You go into siege shelling mode after using this skill. Due to the Commander Tactics passive, enemies hit by this skill will be marked with the Commander's debuff. As for Centurion's hyperactives, his second hyperactive is generally better than his first hyperactive. The next skill I want to talk about is Fatal Cannon. As for the skill trait, you want to leave it traitless. And this skill needs one enhanced cannonball to be used. So you will fire an enhanced cannonball forward. Enemies hit by the enhanced cannonball will have their magical defense reduced by 20% for 5 seconds. The modded version of the skill will target enemies' backs. You can either take the unmod or mod version. It can be hard to work around this skill because it requires an enhanced cannonball. The next skill I want to talk about is Bombing Artillery. The recommended skill trait is heavy, but if you're having MP issues, you can take the light trait. This can be a good filler skill for damage. You generally want to take the modded version of this skill. The next skill I want to talk about is Heavy Field. As for the skill trait, for bossing you generally want to take the Heavy trait, for clearing you can take the Gigantic trait. You can hold down the skill key and use the arrow keys to select the target area while in super armor status. Releasing the skill key will launch a missile that generates Heavy Field on the chosen location. The field will last for 10 seconds. Enemies within the field will receive 10% more damage, and the field prevents enemies from dashing or jumping. This is more relevant in PvP though. The modded version of the skill instant casts and will flatten enemies on hit initially. You generally want to take the modded version of the skill for faster cast time. You can pre-cast the unmodded version of the skill and it does not flatten. And finally, I want to talk about Centurion's Masterclass skill, Hydro Cannon. Stage 1 of this skill is very good in PvP. For PvE, however, generally you only really use this skill if you have nothing else to use. On the screen right now is a recommended skill build for bossing. Whether or not you take the mod or unmod version of Carpet Bombing depends on the boss. Chaos Cannon, Impact Detonation, etc. can also be used. As for your general skill rotation, you want to start by setting up your buffs, tactical field, and heavy field. Then you want to use your main DPS skills, carpet bombing, and artillery strike missile shower. You want to reload your enhanced cannonballs with cannon strike and also mark the enemies with a commander's mark. You generally want to press Mortar whenever it's off cooldown. And if the boss is debuffable, you want to use Cannon Strike. If your main DPS skills are not up, you can use your filler skills like Bombing Artillery, El Saldama, or Dread Chase. On the screen right now is a recommended skill build for clearing. Whether or not you take the mod or unmod version of Carpet Bombing depends on the dungeon. You can also bring Impact Detonation, and Aiming Shot is a skill you can bring specifically for 12-8. And finally, on this screen right now are the skills you want to bring if you're playing Centurion solely as support. If you need an Enhanced Cannonball for Fatal Cannon, you can use Cannon Strike to get Enhanced Cannonballs quickly. Artillery Strike Missile Shower is there mostly for iframes. You can bring any skills for iframes such as Bombing, Artillery, Mod, etc. Tactical field mod can be cast, held, cast, held, etc. Be careful with using the mod version in places that require you to move though. Centurion is a good support class for Rosa Raid, but is outclassed by other support classes in Birth Raid. And finally, I want to talk about Centurion's class relevance in the current meta. Centurion is a good class for clearing and bossing. 
However, he is very chuggy and suffers from cooldown problems. There are better classes. In comparison to the other chunks, his damage is around the same as FP's when it comes to birth rate. He is a decent support class for Rosa Raid, but falls short when it comes to birth rate. His Elsurge Predict Collection registration can be good if you need the extra defense, but otherwise, it's not as high of a priority. 